Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about cable management. The Lewis Winch comes with 150 feet of 3 16 aircraft cable. We also have an option of uh, 250 feet of 1 8 aircraft cable. Uh, that one will only pull about 2,000 pounds. This one you can pull 4,000 pounds straight line or 8,000 pounds using one Lewis Winch snatch block. Now there are some people that have, have tried the new synthetic ropes with the Lewis Winch and they say that they've had good luck with them. We see some upsides and some downsides. Uh, it's extremely expensive, not as uh, wear resistant as the steel cable is, and it doesn't work well in high temperature fire areas, search and rescue, that sort of thing. Um, the downside of course is cable is that it will kink and you have to be careful, especially when you're first un unwinding it. Now, when it comes in the box, it's all wound up like this, and of course it doesn't really want to go straight. So what you have to do is persuade it and, and stretch it all out, all 150 feet, in a long straight line, being very careful that you don't kink it. That's actually the most critical time for your cable. Let me just show you here, I have a sample cable. And when you're unwinding it, you can see that you can get it all tangled up if you're not careful. So what you want to do is carefully untwist it and keep going until you've got it all in a nice straight long line. Now what the cable will want to do if you get a kink in it is it will want to go like this. And if you pull on that, the harder you pull, the more likely you are to get a kink. And it's not that easy to kink, but if you do get a kink, and I did put a little one in the cable there, you create a weak spot, it can actually break some of the fibers and it's not as strong as it was before. So what you want to do is you want to be careful and you want to check your cable regularly over the years that you have your Lewis winch and you want to make sure that there isn't any kinks or frays in the cable where you think it might break and if that's the case you better replace it. Now a lot of people have asked me what happens if the Lewis winch cable breaks when you're under load. Well 150 feet of cable, steel cable, doesn't have much elasticity to it. And elasticity is what's going to cause the cable to jump back at you. Now, the longer the cable that you have out there, the more likely that there's going to be a little bit of elasticity to it. Now, what I like to do with my cable is I cut about 20 or 30 feet off because the 150 feet is the maximum that you can put on the spool of the Lewis winch. And if it loads up a little bit on one side, you can get some binding. If you cut 20 or 30 feet off, run 110, 120 feet, something to that effect. Um, even when, you're, when your cable bind, or loads up on one side, you won't get the binding effect. Now what that also does is it lightens the load a little. This, this full load of cable weighs about seven pounds. So by, by taking a few feet off of it, you can lighten your load by two or three pounds fair, fairly easy. Um, now what I'll show you is how to load up your cable. Once you've got all 150 feet stretched out, of your new cable, what you want to do, or if you're replacing your cable, take all your old cable off in that case, run your new cable in underneath the roller on the front of the fair lead, and in between the two side rollers. Then simply st stick the cable into the hole provided. Once that's in place, by hand, roll up several wraps. And when you get several wraps, 10 to 12 wraps, put a piece of duct tape around it so that you know when you're pulling your cable out that you've reached the end that's as far as you want to go now once you've done that make sure you've got a weight on the end of your cable fire up your saw and bring it in like you would if you're pulling in your load now you've got your cable in place okay, now that we've inserted our cable we've got 10 or 12 wraps around our drum and we've put our duct tape on as you can see we can fire up the saw and bring in the cable and wind it all up I've put a little weight on the other end of it so that, uh, so that we've got some tension on and we're ready to go. So decompression on the saw, on the, the switch. We've got all our cable wound up. We're ready to start a pull. Now I'll give you a couple little tips that I've learned. What we do is we put a little hole on the end of the on the brake handle on the Lewis winch. What well, that's designed for is so you can hook a bungee cord on. Now when I install the brake handle on the Lewis winch, I make sure that the main bolt is fairly tight so that the, the brake is somewhat stiff. That way I can set it and hold, and this, the bungee cord will, will hold it in uh, in the position that I leave it in. I'll show you why I do that. Take the brake completely off on the Lewis winch and start unspooling the cable. Unhook the clutch here first. 
you'll see that it's fairly easy to get a bird's nest like that, or a rat's nest as some people call it. Now, if you put some brake on with a bungee cord, it's a bit too much, about there. Okay, now you can see that I can easily unspool that and I don't get a bird's nest effect because there's a little bit of tension that doesn't allow that spool to get going faster than when I'm actually pulling it out. And that's what, in most cases, causes your bird's nest or your rat's nest. So that's one of the tips that I just wanted to pass on to you. Now, I hope that we've answered all of your questions here for you today. And have a look at our website, www.lewiswinch.com. We have lots more answers, we have lots more videos, and we have assembly instructions there. And if you can't find the answer you're looking for there, please send us an email, info at lewiswinch.com. We'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Now let's go out and have some fun with our Lewis Winch.